I saw this uh, post on Facebook. I thought it was a really great sequence um, of Ben Hogan, ben Hogan swing. Um, uh, but I thought I would make a comment, just a real quick little video uh, for the biomechanics blog regarding what you see and what's actually happening. I thought this was a really great example, and I saw the, the, the posts and the pictures. Um, and, really, so it, and this is just a really brief kind of uh, uh, example. But I wanted to show you, if you look at, you call this picture two, this picture three, and this picture four over here. If you look at uh, picture two as, as he's about maybe halfway into the, uh, the backswing, uh, nearing transition back here, it's pretty obvious that there's some uh, uh, sort of shifting, of, if you will, uh, of the weight towards the rear side. What to understand about, and, we, and, I, and I, po I posted um, previously a couple different videos on uh, ground reaction force and stuff like that, is what's happening is, is th as, as this is occurring, the lower body is actually resisting that movement and starting to change direction. So you're going to get uh, a shear, so you're going to get pressing downward, but you're also going to get a shear application back this direction. Of course, this is in 3D, but you can kind of get the idea. Back this direction, which is going to push the center of pressure this direction um, in, in the movement. Now, the key to this, and what I really wanted to try to point out was, as you move the picture three, visually, it looks like things have shifted this direction already, okay? But you got to remember, this isn't a static. This is a dynamic. And what's happening here at the end of this backswing, really moving into transition into the downswing, or in the, in the throes of transition, is that this, put, this foot is pushing very hard now, less backward and more along the target line. So what you have is you still have the center of pressure influenced by this pressure this pushing of primarily the shear force, but then the downward force that couples with that shear force to create the friction. The center of mass, however, is now moving ahead of the center of pressure. And this creates a, a dynamic that facilitates that forward weight shift in this one. Now, by this picture, you are now certainly influenced the center of pressure move this direction quickly, influenced by dramatic shear application this direction, which is then used to accelerate the lower body. But at this juncture, the center of pressure is still very heavily influenced uh, by the uh, rear foot pressing, uh, creating a shear dynamic. So even though the center of mass and the movement looks to be this way, the center of pressure, um, as, a influ as influenced by force application, uh, is still going to be heavily influenced by the rear leg. As we then, of course, this is a big gap between here and here, but as you're going to jump dramatically forward, but now the center of pressure is going to be influenced predominantly by a large shear force application at the front foot combined with uh, the downward force to create the friction to allow that shear force to occur. Coming off the rear foot, there's hardly any real shear or compressive force or normal force being a, uh, applied back here. So now your center of pressure is going to be forward and it's going to be influenced by uh, the lead foot. But I think the key what, that I'm trying to get across here is that visually this looks like weight shift is forward, but it's not. The, the force application is still predominantly through the rear side, or through the, 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 the uh, right leg in this particular case, which means that your center of pressure is going to be heavily influenced by the this side, although weight is beginning to move this direction, is still not your primary factor. So you've got your center of mass forward of your center of pressure, um, which is um, a, uh, uh, a really critical part of lower body mechanics. And I explained this in a couple different papers, uh, the relationship between center of mass, center of pressure, uh, the rotational versus the uh, sort of the linear components of, of hitting or swinging. Um, so this is really a, a crucial thing, and I think of all the pictures in this sequence, which I love them all, this is the most critical because you get the, the feeling that weight shift, if you want to call it, has already occurred to, to this side, whereas where although the center of mass is moving this direction, it's ahead of the center of pressure, which is still being heavily influenced by that rear foot. So I just thought I would uh, post this. I love, love the sequence of Ben Hogan, and um, thought I would post that you're what you see, and your interpretation of what you see visually, it doesn't always match what is happening dynamically from a physics or a biomechanics perspective. 
Um, and understanding the physics and the biomechanics is really important. You may seem you may feel like it's splitting hairs a little bit, but it's important because when you teach this motion or when you try to train a motion, you need to know where the visual is coming from. You need to know what's producing the visual is a really important part of effectively creating the dynamic that produces the swing mechanism. 